So I know I've been making web apps for a while, and that's because throughout the day, I'm usually sitting at my desk on my laptop. I might be coding, editing, or just watching Netflix. But I realized that for those moments pretty much throughout the rest of the day, when I want to pass time or procrastinate, I'm on my phone. In honor of this realization, I want to try out mobile app development. Specifically, I want to make Android apps. As you'll see in this video, I'm going to spend around two days building a mock YouTube app just like this one. I'll be following a tutorial from YouTube to make this simple app which creates a feed of YouTube courses. When you click a particular course, it leads to a playlist of videos to watch. So let's see what it takes to make my first Android app. When I started this project, all I knew about Android app development was I required this thing called Android Studio and is usually done in Java. So I wanted to find a good tutorial to show me the ropes through an interesting project. After a lot of searching, I found this channel called Let's Build This App that does just that. The great thing about this project was that it was taught in Kotlin, a programming language that is interoperable with Java but is a lot more concise and powerful, perfect for someone switching over from Python. Well, that was exhausting. Let's go make some coffee. Perfect. So here is what we're trying to build. The first element we need to construct is the basic list structure to show a list of videos. In the tutorial, this widget called Recycler View was introduced, which creates a scrolling list of sub-elements. The first cool thing I realized about developing an Android is how many elements and widgets there are to play with. So it's pretty easy to build something visually complex compared to HTML. So here, I just drag and drop the respective widgets to the app mockup and everything else is set up for you. I can do that for the recycler view and for the individual sub-elements like the image and text for each video series. And then I can drag these little circles on the edge of each element to either the edge of the screen or to another element. These are essentially layout constraints that restrict the size and location of particular elements to another one. In this class, main adapter, we need to set up a few methods to make this actually work. The first is get item count, which defines the number of elements in the list. On create view holder is what we use to load what will be in the view itself. So here that's each video element row that we created. Lastly, on bind view holder determines what the contents of each element should be based on its position in the list. I am starved. Let's go make some lunch. I usually opt for something simpler, but today let's make some fried rice. I'll throw in some eggs, frozen veggies, my leftover rice, and that's it. Now we have this list of elements, but we want to show the videos themselves. To do so, we need to fetch the data from an external API and parse the results. At first, I didn't realize that we were mocking out the video data, but actually the creator of the tutorial made his own API that returns a JSON with a list of course series and associated videos. And using a library called OKHTTP, OK we can use this URL and send a request for that data. And something I saw a lot in this tutorial was creating models or classes to represent our different types of data. So here we want to create a few objects like a home feed, video, and channel to represent the structure of the data that we're working with. And then we want to load this data into our app. Luckily for us, there's this library called JSON or GSON, which converts JSON data to Java slash Kotlin objects and vice versa. Here, it can deserialize the video such that it can be loaded into the respective views. And upon inspection in the debugger, we can see that with just a few lines, the data from the API can be imported and converted to the appropriate video and channel objects. And now, when we load the app, we can see the titles of each video, which is pretty good progress for now. Oof, let's stretch out our legs a little bit. At this point, we have a list of videos with just their titles. But to give the full YouTube effect, we need the thumbnails and channel information as well. As we can see in the data retrieved from the API, we get links to images for both the thumbnail and the channel profile picture. To load and cache these images to the page, we have to use this library made by Square called Picasso. And to load the image, save for the thumbnail, we just need to import Picasso and add two lines to load the image from the video object. And now, the app looks so much prettier with those images. So I took a break over the weekend just so I could watch the latest Telugu movies with my parents. And I love how much hype there is around this time of the year for these movies.
Now that we're rest and recharged, let's get back into coding. As of now, we have a visually appealing app, but it doesn't do anything, it's static. To change that, we need to add some on-click listeners to do something when the video is clicked. In order to do this, we need to take advantage of this thing called intent. I'm still a bit hazy on this concept, but basically this is like the glue that communicates between components in the app. So here, we want the list of videos to show up when we click a particular course. Let's call that course detail activity. To do that, we add an on-click listener to the home page and establish this intent. So now when a course is clicked on the home page, we can open up the course details on a new page. Okay, time for lunch, again. Here is my recent favorite, a turkey sandwich made in a panini press. I like to pair this with some chips and I like to eat while watching Netflix. Okay, now we are able to switch between pages but we need to see more details about the videos themselves. To do this, we need to pass data from the home page to the child page through that intent that we initialized. We we'll use one method for the parent to talk to the child and another for the child to retrieve that data. We should also use the video ID of each course to load the subsequent video thumbnails and titles. So we'll pass that video ID to the child component, make another call to the API and extract the data in a manner similar to what we did for the home feed. And now we can click a particular course and find the list of videos associated with it. Since it was finally nice out, Yogi and I took a break by going out for a walk in the sun. Okay, we're almost there. The only thing missing is that we need to see the videos on the course detail page themselves and be able to watch them. So again, we'll set up an on-click listener on the course detail page, create a new layout for each lesson, pass the data through intent, and load the contents. And now, to watch the video in the series, we'll pass the URL to each lesson's page, retrieve that URL, and load it. And finally, we are done. And just in case you forgot what this app looked like, let's go through a brief demo. So just like in the YouTube app, we have a homepage with a list of so-called videos. These are actually thumbnails for video courses made by the app's creator. When we click a particular course thumbnail, we find the course details page, which has each video in the series. And clicking a video leads us to what's actually a web page with the content itself. And yeah, thanks so much for watching. Please leave a comment below with any requests for Android apps or thoughts on what I should make next. Please like and subscribe if you like the video and I'll see you next time.